This is the Wix Lounge, and uh, today we are partnering with the, and with the, the people from um, the uh, Greenwich Village and Chelsea Chamber of Commerce to uh, host you guys here. So I will invite Amy to come and uh, say a few words about the Chamber. Thanks, Sandy. It's wonderful to be here with Wix, and uh, thanks so much for hosting us. Uh, I must say that as someone who can't even open Photoshop, Wix is a fantastic platform to start your website. Um, anyways, my name's Amy Say. I'm the Interim Executive Director of the Greenwich Village Chelsea Chamber of Commerce. I know it's such a mouthful. Um, it's a pleasure to have you guys here today. This is a fantastic turnout for us. Um, a little bit about us, if you're not familiar, we are a nonprofit membership-based organization. We work to promote, network, educate, and promote, uh, did I say that one already? And network uh, and advocate for our members here in Manhattan. First of all, welcome to Chelsea. This is just one of the many areas that we represent, and I hope to get to meet all of you guys later on. Uh, this is our first event with the Enterprise Forum, and hopefully there'll be many more to come. Without further ado, I would like to introduce Richard uh, Rice from the uh, Enterprise for Forum. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Hi, I'm Rick Rice, and I just want to welcome you. And for those of you who don't know the forum, we do about 10 to 15, is this on? About 10 to 15 events a year, uh, symposia on various topics related to tech entrepreneurship in this area. So if you've got this uh, sheet, it's got the schedule of events coming up. We've got a pretty active fall. Uh, we're doing one with the New York City Bar on patents and some of the pitfalls if, if you're working with the government. The entrepreneurship is focused on the role of universities in New York City and the partnerships technology transfer that the universities are doing. Uh, we've got one in December. Uh, it's uh, financing technology companies in, at different stages and what kinds of sources of capital and what the, the climate is like. Uh, we have, we do startup showcases probably uh, three or four times a year. There's one coming in December that's specifically focused on women entrepreneurs. And then there's an event in January, which is a new fan format for us. We're calling it a think tank session. Uh, and we're hoping it'll be the first of a series. This one is on the feature of TV. And it's aimed at getting high interactivity among people trying to figure out what the future of TV will be. Thank you. So I'll turn it over now to Steve Grotman, who is the uh, moderator and organizer for this event. And Great, thank Richard, and thanks to our uh, sponsors. And um, so uh, every, every time I I do a panel, I like I like to do something that I'd actually like to come to see. <laughs> so I'm glad you all are here. Um, we have a, a an august panel here to talk about something that has been very long in the making. Um, the last time uh, fundraising rules were changed uh, was 1934, during the Great Depression, when Congress um, uh, essentially reduced the ability to, for uh, uh, businesses to solicit money to uh, build businesses. And some argued at the time that this would, uh, was, the laws were too punitive and would extend the Great Depression. Um, Eighty years later, amidst one of the, the next biggest uh, downturns in the economy, Congress um, has once again um, decided to change the rules uh, uh, to uh, um, enable a new general solicitation capability um, for companies to raise money. And of course, there there's the one side of, of the political spectrum that uh, believes that um, communications like this, especially in an inst instantaneous and internet-enabled uh, uh, time, uh, is going to create a, a lot of uh, opportunities for criminal activities. You know, orphans and widows will be cast in the street, and some some potentially really bad things might happen in terms of uh, uh, negative activity. Um, and then there are others who say this is the dawn of a new venture capital and entrepreneurial revolution that, you know, uh, 
dogs and cats will live together again, and you know everything is going to be great for entrepreneurs everywhere. Um, uh, and uh, especially, everyone will have the capability to get into the next Twitter or Facebook. So, um, with that, over 500 new platforms have sprung up to take advantage of this opportunity. And um, so, uh, tonight, we're going to try and sort of shed a little bit more light over uh, some of the uh, inaccuracies of what I just said. Um, and uh, talk, yeah, there you go. And, um, but we have a, an august uh, panel um, with folks from uh, Rocket Hub and Second Market um, and uh, uh, Mince Levin. And um, we're really looking forward to this. So, before, so instead of me butchering their introductions, I'm going to let them each introduce themselves, starting with uh, Vladimir. We're not going to try your last name. Thank you for that. Uh, I go like Madonna, just Vladimir. Um, so my name is Vladimir Bukicevic. Uh, I'm one of the co-founders of RocketHub.com. RocketHub is one of the biggest crowdfunding platforms in the world, but probably the fastest growing at this point. Um, and uh, we launched the site actually before these rules came out, uh, three and a half, four years ago, um, with the belief that crowdfunding um, for rewards or goods, the perks-based <laughs> model, uh, can change the world. And it has. Which, which we've seen. Um, and so after a couple of years of success uh, uh, for sites like my, myself, uh, like Rocket Hub, Indiegogo, Kickstarter, that's when the government took notice. It's when they saw the success, when they realized that something powerful and, and wonderful was going on. It's, it's when they started to take credit for it. Um, and hopefully uh, they'll be able to, <laughs> to do so. Um, so we really believe in this model. We helped push along the, the legislation. We testified in Congress. Um, we, uh, we held the, jobs, um, uh, the White House Jobs Council at our offices, and we really believe strongly uh, that cats and dogs will finally live together, um, but not in that extreme. Um, we do believe in this model. We've seen it be powerful in the current uh, definition, in the current form, which we'll describe hopefully later on, and uh, think that crowdfunding for equity could, uh, could shake up the, the entrepreneurial market in a very, very positive way. Uh, I do have a video to show, um, if the audio works. Sure, lights please. A&E and Rocket Hub are teaming up for Project Startup, connecting aspiring entrepreneurs with an online community looking to support something new. Rocket Hub is the world's crowdfunding machine, as we like to call it. It's a place where anybody with an idea can come and leverage the crowd to fund their idea. What Andy and Rocket Hub bring together is this powerful dynamic to really push these companies to that next level. <laughs> Project Startup is about new ways of taking your ideas and turning them into businesses that work, not just on paper, but in real life. So when you combine the energy of Duck Dynasty and all that entrepreneurial get up and go with people like Barry on, on Storage Wars and, and our show Shipping Wars, Project Startup is going to help our audience do the same thing. We have tips on how to begin your search for funding and how to start a business plan. We're bringing our celebrity talent online to give you tips about how they got started. And it's going to help people understand how to bring their ideas to the marketplace. It's going to link funds to the people who need funds, but not before they're ready to go out. Our view is that in five to ten years, 95% of seed funding is going to come from the crowd. This is a whole new wave. It's a whole new way of doing things. And together, we create this very powerful new mechanism for taking entrepreneurs to the next level. Project Startup, where big ideas become real life success stories. So this demonstrates our partnership with Indie Networks, um, which is one of the largest TV networks in the world. That they're a partnership between um, Disney and Hearst. And what we're seeing is that finally, the big brands are catching up and they're starting to, to take notice of crowdfunding. And what Rocket Up is doing is really trying to, to take crowdfunding to that next level with partnerships like this. And, uh, and I'll, I'll describe it a little bit more uh, down the road. Nice to meet everyone. I'm Jerry Vidal uh, at Indiegogo. Indiegogo is the world's largest crowdfunding platform. 
Uh, we operate <coughs> across uh, pretty much every country. We've got thousands of campaigns running every week, money being dispersed uh, anywhere from 70 to 190 countries every week. Uh, we focus across uh, creative projects, uh, cause and charitable projects, as well as entrepreneurial. Um, a little bit about me. Uh, I got to Indiegogo after sort of a, a more traditional career by uh, running my own sort of accidental crowdfunding campaign. Um, and we ended up raising about $550,000 uh, from 12,000 people in under four weeks, and my total out-of-pocket investment was $35. And because of that, I sort of took a step back from this, and I had to ask myself, what the heck just happened, um, and why? And I was so invigorated by that, I decided to um, to jump into the space more fully. And uh, I'm just a, a huge believer in it because I saw it firsthand. Okay. Thanks for that. Um, Stacy, is this working okay? Testing the microphone first. Um, I'm Stacy Roscado. I head up investor engagement and marketing and second market. And I think I might be one of the few people on the panel that is currently dealing with equity crowdfunding every day and trying to navigate through all of the different and conflicting rules and guidance from all of the different organizations, including the SEC and FINRA. So I can share some more stories if anyone has any questions, and I hope you all have a lot of questions, because I think that's what makes these panels most interesting. So. Great. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, panel. Thanks, everyone, for coming. Uh, my name is Dan DeWolf. I am co-chair of the Venture Capital Emerging Companies Practice Group of Vince Levin. Is this better? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So hi, I'm Dan DeWolf. I am co-chair of the Venture Capital and Emerging Practice Group at Mitz Levin. We're a large national law firm uh, focused on technology. Uh, I'm also a law professor at NYU Law School. I ran for my class to get here today uh, where I teach venture capital. In fact, we were talking today about the new 506C, so it was very appropriate. Uh, and I've been involved in online capital raising since the early narrowband days um, when I was a part of the launch of WIT Capital, which was the first online broker dealer started by Andy Klein and Bob Lesson. And I was head of ventures there at some point. So um, this has been an evolution, and um, what we're seeing now is, is really the fruits of, of years of people uh, working with us. Great. Thanks, Dan. So, this is good? Okay, yeah. great. Um, so let's make sure we keep our microphones close to the face and we'll keep, uh, so everyone can hear. So um, actually, just before we started, um, I thought uh, we were having an internal discussion here and um, I thought what would be helpful is to break apart sort of what some of the things we just said um, so we can, so everyone here is level set. So I'd like to have Vlad talk about um, what what, the, what what are we really talking about here in terms of on a, on a thirty thousand foot scale, um, and then you know equity funding, crowdsourcing. What is all this? What are all these terms? What do they mean? And then maybe Dan can um, talk a little bit about uh, some of the actual legal plumbing that we're talking about here. And then we can kind of deep dive deeper into a conversation. Does that make sense? All right. All right. It's a tall task. Um, so, really, we're talking about crowdfunding. And crowdfunding is a very broad, misunderstood, misused occasionally term. And there are really four types of crowdfunding. Um, the first is purely charitable giving. So, I, we, we define that as crowdfunding as well. Some people do, some people don't, but we do. And so it's just giving money and asking nothing in return for that money. It's very simple. Um, the second type of crowdfunding is perks-based or goods-based crowdfunding, which is really the crowdfunding that's taken off over the last three or four years on Indiegogo, on Kickstarter, on, on Rocket Hub, and a, and a bunch of other platforms as well. And this is where you give money and you get something in return, whether it's a, a thank you on a website or whether it's a CD from a musician or whether it's a, a, a product, like the shoe uh, that we described. It's uh, giving money, but getting something in return. It's, it's more of a barter system. Um, the next type of crowdfunding is debt-based crowdfunding. So it's where 
you expect to receive a return on, on your contribution. And this type of crowdfunding has existed for a little while as well on sites like Prosper, Lending Club, and, and a few others as well. Um, and then finally, what, what everyone's really excited about, um, for, for better or for worse, and what this, the new laws have been addressing is crowdfunding for equity, which means that you can give little bits of your company in exchange for financial contributions for as little as hundred dollars or, or, or a few hundred dollars or a thousand dollars. And um, the, the, the kind of the, the earth shattering component of this, at least to me and to some other people, is the fact that not only will rich people, so the, nine, the, the one percent accredited investors be able to invest in, in startups, but the 99 percent will be able to do that as well. And so that means that non-accredited investors, me or you, anyone really, will be able to contribute or, or to invest in startups. And this is a really, really big deal because this hasn't been possible in, in, in scale for 70 years, 80 years. So that's really what we're talking about when we say crowdfunding. Okay, so let, let me elaborate. That was, that was a great uh, intro. So the sea change event that has happened is on September 23rd, it became lawful to raise money through general solicitation, which means on the internet, or advertising, for equity, which was never allowed before. But there's a proviso. The proviso is you can only accept offers from accredited investors. That's a defined term, and it means generally, for individuals, $200,000 worth of 